so the next topic under our discussion is metals and non metals so if we go for metals non metals i'm also adding one more term here that is metalloids so here if you go for metals generally elements with the elements with valence electrons valency electrons equal to less than equal to 3 elements with valence electrons less than equal to 3 are generally termed as they are termed as metals in general then elements with the with valency electrons greater than 5 greater than greater than or equal to 5 electrons are said to be non metals said to be non metals 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 are metals when they interact with oxygen they form metal oxides metal oxides and these metal oxides upon hydrolysis they give bases hence they are basic in nature hence they are basic oxides these metals they are basic oxides examples you can take number of examples you can take sodium sodium when reacts with oxygen it gives sodium oxide sodium oxide upon hydrolysis gives sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide is a base and it is basic in nature if you take aluminum aluminum reacts with oxygen to form aluminum oxide aluminum oxide aluminum oxide upon hydrolysis gives that is aluminum hydroxide aluminum of course it is amphoteric amphoteric it can behave as acid acidic it can be acidic and it can also be basic it's an exception but apart from this if you take that is calcium for example calcium for example calcium reacts with oxygen to form calcium oxide and this calcium oxide upon hydrolysis gives calcium hydroxide it's a base so it is basic in nature likewise if you go for if you go for that is non metals if you go for non metals all non metals when they interact with oxygen they form non metal oxides they form non metal oxides and these non metal oxides when they are subject to hydrolysis they give acids so they are acidic oxides they are acidic oxides so here what we have to notice here is we take one or two examples if carbon is a non metal example if carbon is a non metal carbon solid reacts with oxygen gas to form carbon dioxide carbon dioxide gas carbon dioxide gas upon hydrolysis gives carbonic acid h2co3 carbonic acid is an acid it's an acid similarly if it takes sulfur upon treating with the sulfur treating with oxygen gas it gives sulfur dioxide gas treating with water gives h2so3 again it is an acid so if you go for this if you go for the metal oxides metal oxides that is which are basic in nature basic nature basic nature metal oxide basic nature decreases 
decreases from left to right left to right in periodic table whereas if you take non metal oxides if you take non metal oxides acidic nature acidic nature increases upward arrow stands for increasing of the property and downward arrow represents the decreasing of the property increases non metallic oxides that is acidic nature increases from left to right in a periodic table left right in a periodic table similarly if you go for the uh, the if if you take this metal uh, metal oxides and non metal oxides we also have some more type of elements that is lanthanides 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 and uh, actinoids both these elements both this set of elements they belong to lanthanides and actinoids belong to they belong to third b group of d block lanthanides and actinoids belongs to third b group of d block third b group of d block and they are called inner transition transition elements in the transition elements and uh, these lanthanides and actinoids of d block also they share the properties of both the metallic oxides as well as non metallic oxides of s block and p block in fact when you say metallic oxides they belong to s block and when you say non metallic oxides they say p block the non metallic oxides generally majority of the elements in the non metallic oxides they belong to p block and majority of the elements which are uh which are metal oxides they belong to s block so if you go for lanthanides and actinoids of third b group of the d block the d block elements usually share the common properties of both s block and p block so that's why they are called as inner transition elements because they are discovered after a gap of nearly 10 years in the periodic table that's why we call them as inner transition elements and the word inner transition elements actually means that the differentiating electron of the lanthanides and actinoids the last electron of the elements of uh lanthanides and actinoids they enter into the inner penultimate shell of the f orbital and that is the reason why we call them as inner transition elements and the word transition means the unpaired electrons the incompletely filled electrons in both the d orbital as well as f orbital of their electronic configuration but one thing what we have to understand is they share the properties of both s block elements and p block elements so if that is the case next uh, if you go for semi metals semi metals semi metals or metalloids metalloids also they are both acidic acidic as well as they are basic in nature they show both acidic nature and basic nature the best example is here you can take in third a group you can take boron aluminum in fourth a group you can take germanium in fourth a group you can take germanium in fifth a group you can take arsenic and antimony and so on all this are the examples of that is semi metals or metalloids so because they show the property of both acidic nature and basic nature uh, that's the reason we call them as metalloids so the metalloids nature is associated with both the acidic nature and the basic nature of the